101, Dead or Alive. So, um, Mike Jensen is our speaker for today. He is the owner, operator of Triumph Graphics. And um, he does have staff with him today, but only as support, I guess. So, um, Lots of support. <laughs> Um, but a little bit about Triumph Graphics, um, they uh, do printing, but they do much more than that. They go from your concept, they do the design, they do the printing, they do the mailing, and they also do websites. So, um, some start to finish type of um, information and uh, services that they provide. And then, as I know firsthand, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, business that they have in our community. And, and we appreciate that. It is a family-owned operation. So uh, with that, um, and Mike can tell you a little bit more about that, but um, as we go on here, I want to let you know too, um, we are going to be having another one of these series um, on finances. So we'll be looking for that as we go down for the next couple months after the holidays. So anyway, with that, Mr. Mike Benson. Thank you. Just one other chamber announcement. I was just over at the History Center, and they're getting all set up for chamber after hours today, so don't miss it. It's I mean, Heidi's put on quite a spread, yes, so great. and all the trees are there. Definitely want to see that. Um, first of all, thank you for coming out and, and being here. I know I um, emailed Katie earlier in the week saying, "Has anybody signed up?" And she's like, "Well, yeah, we had you know 12, 14." I'm like, "Oh, okay." I was like, oh, "If we had two, I'd say we could cancel, but no, we can't. But we're not. Um, we're going to have so it's a lie. It's a lie." Uh, Glenda Smith is here with me today. I'm very blessed and fortunate to have her as well as a number of other wonderful team members at Triumph. Um, we're really not going to talk much about Triumph today. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about marketing promotion um, with your business, your organization. And it was nice as I was going around catching up to me um, with a few of you. We have a really nice cross section of, of both industry, uh, retail, as well as nonprofit here today. And so what I'm going to talk about today hopefully will apply to all of you and you'll be able to glean some things. Uh, I will share up front with you as I did with Glenda. The front part of this is kind of textbook. It's kind of pretty straightforward. But when we get to the back side, we're going to have some fun. And when we start really looking at um, millennial marketing and some of that, we're going to have some fun with that. Kind of to start out with, um, one of the things that uh, I had agreed to do this, and then two weeks ago I had a chance to take a trip to D.C. real quick, and I grabbed a book in the airport, still have my boarding pass, um, in the book, uh, it's by Daniel Pink, To Sell as Human, and I found it really a resourceful book. So a lot of this, or some of this presentation today, you're going to, um, it's going to tie back to that book and what I caught in there, but what percentage of your work involves convincing or persuading people to give up something they value for something you have? No matter what it is, whatever we're doing, whether it's you know Habitat for Humanity, asking for support for funds for their organization, um, they need to convince or, or build a relationship or trust that if I were to give them some money, um, that's something I have, they're going to do something in return with that, which is help a family out or um, whether it's lumber from out of town or lumber, or whatever the case may be. So we have to kind of be thinking of that mindset. We're constantly selling. Um, I'm selling every day with my children, trying to convince them to take showers and uh, brush their teeth. I have three boys, so you know that's a constant battle there. So we are always selling in one way, shape, or form. Um, so it's, we, we always kind of think, well, I don't sell, or I'm not in the selling capacity. No, pretty much everybody is. We're going to talk about a lot of terms today. We're going to throw some things back and forth. So I thought it might be beneficial just to take a couple minutes and walk through some of these rather quickly. Um, I'm going to suggest you can take some notes, that sort of thing, but really just kind of absorb what's here. Uh, for each of us, we handle these things differently. Some of us are very much um, detail-oriented. We want everything written out. For me, I'm more of a generalist. and. I like to know the concepts, and then I apply them, and I do some of that via gut reaction. I know some of you in here are you know, what I would consider small business operators like myself, um, where a lot of what we do, we don't necessarily have the time to do the full in-depth plans, but we have a good handle on where our business is, what's happening, where we're going, and things like that. So it's nice to have these concepts. If at some point you do want copies of the slides, I can get them to you later if, you're, if there's some information or details that you want, we can do that. Kind of comparing marketing versus sales. These are often two um, terms that somewhat 
are interchangeable. Sometimes they, the lines blur a little bit. But I thought maybe we should just walk through a little bit so as we talk further in the conversation today, we can separate that out. Um, marketing, really kind of looking to the future, looking more long term, what's the plan, how is it working out, those kinds of things. Where sales is really more of the immediate. It's, um, you know, the person coming in that, for example, at Alexander, that wants to buy that hammer. They're coming in, they want to buy the hammer, you're ready to sell them the hammer, you're closing, that's the sale, that's the selling, um, that sort of thing. I know like with Kathy Purdy here in real estate, she's here today, um, for you, you kind of go back and forth. A lot of times it's, it's building that relationship, that trust. There may not even be a thought of purchasing a home on the horizon, but it's, it's the, the marketing side kicks in and you need to have that relationship, that long-term plan of, you know, where am I in the community? How are they seeing me? How are they connecting with me? And then at some point, maybe you'll get to the sale. And it may not happen. I mean, that, that's kind of the, the difference in approach. Um, marketing is one to many. So starting with one, you know, point, but reaching out to the masses. You typically don't sell to the masses, where sales are usually more one-on-one, -on -one, more individualized. Um, you know, we can go through each of these, but I mean, from a strategy, um, marketing is kind of pulling the person along, connecting with them, building the relationship, where sales can be a little more of a push, a little more of a, you know, we need to close the deal, we need to, to wrap things up, that kind of thing. So, um, some of the differences there, advertising versus promotion. Um, another two terms that um, kind of are interchangeable um, to a degree, but yet there's enough of a difference there. When we think of advertising, <coughs> Advertising is, can be more of a long-term sort of effort. Like for us, we at Triumph do this calendar every year. This we consider more of an advertising piece. Um, it's not for an immediate sale. It's not because, oh my gosh, I got this. I'm going to come in and get X, Y, Z. It's really not our purpose or point in this. This is more advertising. This is creating brand awareness. This is creating um, an association with us, getting you to hang it in your office so that our logo is present on an ongoing basis. Um, where a promotion is selling a specific you know, product, it's, um, it's typically more short-term. It has a short-term life cycle. Um, you know, I see Sue here from Custom Coffee. If she's trying to sell you know, cocoa today, I mean, she's running a special on hot cocoa that you'll come in and she's giving it away today. So but you're all here for lunch and it was only over the lunch hour that she was giving it away. So. You missed that opportunity. We'll catch you next time. But I mean, whatever the offer is, it's typically a more short term, um, not necessarily very expensive. Um, there's lots of options and ways to promote. We'll talk about those later, um, but depending upon what it is relative to uh, what the sale might be. So you can kind of see I mean, how those two differentiate a little bit as we look at um, both are a type of marketing tool, a type of effort that, that we can put forward. One of the things to look at the bottom of the screen, uh, when we look at advertising, this is slow. It's steady, it's planned, it's continual. But typically in a promotion, it's very soon. You wanted a more immediate response, that sort of thing as you move forward. That gave you a little bit of background. Today we're going to look at really two areas. One is traditional marketing. Um, and we're going to go through some of the basics of traditional marketing and how that might work in your business. And then secondly, we're really going to take and probably spend the majority of our time on millennial marketing. And I'll explain that later, what that is or how that works. Um, but I think it's something we all need to be aware of. And as I started to do research for this presentation, myself even became more aware of, wow, there's a lot to think about in that. So um, as we work through traditional marketing, it's still a value. You don't lose it. The fundamentals of marketing are still in place. Um, and today we're going to look at you know, everything from marketing research, how to mission statement, um, the market, what's the market like for your business, uh, pricing, promotion mix, set up a plan and budget, work the plan and budget, and measure results. Uh, most of this is, is loosely derived from a um, oh, small business. I can't think of any of the organization right now. It'll come to me in a minute. Um, but I pulled it from an organization that really focuses on small business. When we look at research, there's a couple of different types of research that we can, can go for, uh, whether it's a startup or an existing business, that sort of thing. Research is fairly important, and it's pretty easy to do. 
One would be secondary research. What's happening in your industry? I'm sure Kathy has been paying very close attention to the real estate market and that industry and everything that maybe has or hasn't been happening, but um, you know what's going on with your neighbors, you know what's happening with the other agents, you know what's happening in the, the region, and I'm sure as a banker over here, you're paying attention to that as well. You know what's happening in the industry, um, how houses, homes, mortgages, things like that are moving. Um, the competition, be aware of your competition. Um, you know, be aware of what they're doing, but the one caution I would put to that is don't let it drive your business. Focus on what you're doing and do it well. Um, I had a manager way back when I was in high school. I worked for the Golden Corral. It was here in town. Some of you may remember that. And Bonanza came to town. And we were panicked. We were all concerned. We thought we were going to close the doors. And Lyle Morrell, some of you may know him, um, pulled us all together and said, listen, they're going to go check out the other place if they're going to come back because we're giving quality service. We're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We built the relationships. Um, they'll come back to us. And it happened. They went and tried. Uh, our sales were down for a little while. They came back. The other place actually closed as there's not a bonanza in town. Um, so, anyway, I mean, be aware of your competition, but don't let it drive your business in that sense. Um, be aware of your products or services and how they fit in the industry, um, what happens, how that all works, and your customers. Know your customers. Know what your customers likes, dislikes, know what their demographics are, because part of what we're going to talk about when we get into millennial marketing, you want to be where and with your clients. You want to connect with them um, wherever they are and with whatever's happening in their world. So kind of be, be cognizant of that. That's secondary research. And there's lots of, you can Google in your industry, I'm sure, um, and, and find white papers and things like that on your industry to have a better idea of trends and markets and what's happening. Um, primary research. This is first-hand research. This is where you reach out and talk to your customers, talk with your friends, talk with um, anybody you can talk with to try and stay connected find out what's going on. Uh, if your geographic area is Owatonna, make sure that you're connecting with the chamber, that you're talking with the folks down there, because they have the pulse on what's happening in this community. They know where the trends are going to be. Stay involved, stay connected, because that's going to keep you on trend. That's going to keep you involved and connected into what's happening. Social media connections. Um, you know, really stay involved. I mean, the day and age, for some of us, as I look around the room, most of us are probably in that same age range for the most part. There's a couple of young ones here, but we won't go there. Um, social media and some of that we're a little afraid of or we get a little skittish about. It's okay. You need to be there. You need to see what's happening. You need to um, take a look at some of that information. I figure if my father-in-law, who is 73 or 4, somewhere in that neighborhood, is on Facebook, I think we're all okay. We can all handle it. It's all good. He did say to me the other day, though, he's like, I get all this stuff I don't want. How, come, how can I get rid of that? And I'm like, well, that's just, it feeds in. It's kind of like your newspaper. You know, you get your newspaper and you get everything that's in there. You pick and choose what you want to read. Oh, I can relate to that then. So, um, use it in that sense. Survey. Survey your existing customers. Survey via um, a survey monkey. I know that the chamber uses those all the time after different events or different organizations. It gives good feedback to be able to change what you're doing next go around. Um, it's a perfect way. Uh, there's also organizations, I know in town, Client Research Services, they provide that service. We also have a college and university center here. I don't know if they have a marketing class that would um, work with that, but uh, I know in college I did a, um, when I was at Mankato, we did a survey and a, some research for a restaurant in Mankato, and they were very pleased. I mean, they got some really solid information. We were able to do the analysis for them, and they were able to make some decisions on how they were going to run their business. So um, tap into those resources that are out there. So market research, know what's happening. Uh, mission statement. Some of this is fairly basic. I think all of you know that stuff. Um, you know, what are special characteristics of your product and service? What differentiates you? I know like the travel headquarters, uh, especially with your flying wheels division, that really differentiates you in the marketplace 
and Barbara and the whole team and you have really done a great job of, of leveraging that and working that into your mission, into who you are and, and what, what that does for you. Um, price point is, um, what price point is in the market for this product or service? Um, and that's a challenge for all of us, especially those of us that compete with, like me, as a small independent business, competing with the Office Max of the world. Or I'm sure Alexander Lumber competing with the Lowe's or Home Depot's of the world. We gotta figure out our right niche and where we work into that and work that into kind of our overall mission statement and where we're going and what we want to do. You know, what is your annual goal? Um, you know, how much do you need to sell or how much do you need to, to move of that product or that service? Or, you know, what's the budget for that nonprofit organization? What do you need to make on an um, appeal campaign? What's your goal? Set some goals so that way you know if you've achieved those goals. Um, the market. Some of this, I'm, I'm speaking to the choir here, I think, for the most part, but a customer oriented marketing style, really focused on the customer, uh, will capture a much greater share uh, than one that's centered just on the product or the service. And as I look around and have you know a number of you, your model really does focus on the customer, knowing them by name, knowing who they are, that sort of thing. Um, you know, who's, let's see, as we look at some of this, you know, who's competing for the same product <coughs> um, and, and really focus on the customer within that direct or indirect competition. Um, indirect competition can be a bit of a challenge and a bit of a um, hard to determine sometimes, but if a person has X amount of money, well, for example, take travel for a, sec for a second, if they have X amount of money to spend, are they going to buy that new sofa? Where are they going to go on that cruise? Sometimes those are, that's the indirect cost. So how do you market to that? How do you help them make the decision to go with the, the cruise as opposed to the sofa? I said that because I don't think we have any furniture sales in the <laughs> today, so I'm good. But that, that's some of the indirect things that we're looking at and we need to be aware of. Um, you know, know what your similarities or differences are between you and, and others and your competitions. How are you different than them? How will you leverage that? If you are truly a, um, if there's something unique about you or something unique that you bring to the industry, um, whether it's technology with sputtering components and things that you bring into the businesses that you work with, how are you leveraging that? How are you letting them and future customers know that you bring this to the table, this knowledge, this breadth to the table? I um, want to make sure that we're doing that. Pricing. This is one of the areas where a lot of small businesses can get really um, caught, if you will. Uh, you need to understand what your costs are and what the market will accept. Um, because many times we follow some of these strategies of market penetration where the price is really low ball. You want to get in there. You want to get all the business you can, but you can't, you can't maintain that. You can't sustain that. Um, for us in the printing industry, we found that especially with the downturn economy, a lot of the larger operations that had these big monster presses to fill were really lowballing every quote. And we were losing quotes that we normally would get. And it was because it was being lowballed by these organizations. But as you look now, many of them are gone. They couldn't maintain <coughs> that sort of, of pricing structure. So be, be careful when you're putting together your marketing plan and that sort of thing, you're watching your pricing. Same with skimming. Skimming is where you come in with a real high price because it's maybe something new in the market or it's a new offering or that sort of thing. Well, how do you maintain or bring that down to a reasonable price and will you lose out because people don't trust you because you've overpriced your product or, you know, I mean, there's some pitfalls to that as well. Um, another one is follower pricing, you know. Um, I mean, and I'm sure Sue probably faces that a little bit with a coffee shop competition in the community trying to set her price to where it's reasonable compared to, um, to others, but then she has to position the difference of going to her place versus you know, um, another location. So that's a bit of a struggle in how that all works. Um, the other thing you want to figure in is production costs and non-production costs. Um, this works for both service and products. I know in some of the nonprofits I've been connected with, they forget about their costs, that they have real costs, that you know, yeah, you put on this wonderful fundraiser, you get X amount of people there, you make X amount of money, but if you really looked back to the true labor hours you